Now, it's been over two weeks since Meghan Markle launched her lifestyle brand, American Riviera Orchard, what, on Instagram, a name so pretentiously stupid one wonders whether she just typed fancy name for lifestyle website into ChatGBT. She launched the site alongside a soft glamour video showing her picking flowers and walking around her estate in a big black ball gown, as you do. But since then... Nothing. Crickets. Just a few leaks from trademark applications that suggest this is going to be another celebrity wellness site like Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop or Kourtney Kardashian's Poosh. Royal reporter Kinsey Schofield joins me now. Kinsey, what can we expect from American Riviera Orchard? Is it a... I can't think of a more pretentious name, but are we going to have another Kardashian or Gwyneth Paltrow style lifestyle wellness website? Well, I'd rather um, I'd rather compare it to Chrissy Teigen. Remember, they were both on Deal or No Deal together. Oh uh, no! And, they, oh, and they're God. both very woke characters. No. Um, but I, I love that you use the word pretentious because that was my first instinct. I mean, this is a woman that wrote Congress. Remember, over you know, um, she wanted. I think it was extended parental leave. She wrote Congress telling them that she ate at the four ninety nine salad bar at Sizzler, which completely contradicted the Instagram posts that she had posted years ago about how her dad would take her to all of these upscale Beverly Hills delis after dance class. You know, it, it you know, it always just depends on who she's in front of, though, the way she talks about her past. Um, but yeah, the American Riviera Orchard, uh, someone compared the name to a senior living facility. She's definitely trying to, I guess, plant herself, really plant herself in this Santa Barbara community um, which is interesting because she's only lived there four years. It's like being a duchess for only 19 months and insisting people still refer to you as one. <laughs> now to King Charles. He's made uh, his first outing since his cancer diagnosis, appearing at the Easter Sunday service at St George's Chapel in Windsor. He appeared, Kinsey, quite uh, well, happy. Do we know much about how his treatment is progressing and when he is expected to be back on full-time duties for the Royals. You know, he was shaking hands with people at this Easter event, which did surprise me because that was one of the things early on when we found out his, about his cancer that we knew would have to take a back seat uh, just, just because they wanted to continue to protect his health while his immune system might be jeopardized through some of this, these treatments. So I think the fact that he was shaking hands is a very good sign if we look at um, the last few months months of, of his treatments uh, for a, a mystery cancer. Additionally, when one individual said, get well soon, he jokingly replied, I'm doing my best. So obviously he's in very good spirits. I do think we can expect to see him at Royal Ascot. I do believe, you know, he's doing everything in his power to to have a, a prominent, um, to, to have some sort of prominent role at Trooping the Color. Uh, so I think that it, it looks like he's on the up and up, but with everything going on with the Princess of Wales now, um, I know it was important to him to be out front and to show everyone things are going to be okay. Now, we have to talk about Sean Diddy Combs. He used to be called Puff Daddy. Uh, he's a rap mogul. He's not just an artist. He is uh, hugely successful and he's been planning a comeback. But now he's planning his defence against allegations ranging from sexual assault and human trafficking to shooting cover-ups. And it seems uh, there's a lot of people coming out of the woodwork now, Kinsey, telling their stories about his behaviour, all of which is uh, he is denying at this point. He hasn't been charged with anything yet, but federal agents are watching him as part of an ongoing investigation into sex trafficking allegations. Some of his associates have fled to the Caribbean. Um, and this is becoming a scandal, Kinsey, that's... Uh, being compared to those of Harvey Weinstein and Jeffrey Epstein. 
And R. Kelly, yeah. Um, for instance, uh, Natanya mm. Rubin, she's one of three people that was hurt in the 1990, 1999 club incident. There's a couple of incidents, so uh, let me get yes. my you know ears right. Mm. She, you know, she <laughs> has bullet fragments inside of her face. And she said that she is willing to allow them to go in there and um, try to collect those if she if if it could finally get uh, P Diddy in trouble for um, th this incident that happened in 1999 that he was never charged for. Um, I've been asked about him repeatedly, and I I I did work with him. I threw a party with him years ago um, for his Ciroc vodka, and I had no issues with him. Of course, there were cameras following us, so I'm sure that that had a mm. lot to do with it. Um, but I have been surprised by you know what I would what I would consider his downfall over the last few weeks. Mm, absolutely. And uh, you mentioned that case in New York and the female victim there. She was shot in the face. She survived and she is willing to have the bullet fragments removed from her face. There's still bullet fragments there. She has always said from day one, she saw who shot her. She has always alleged it was P. Diddy, not the guy who took the blame. But Diddy wasn't charged. He had weapons charges he beat. Someone else served 10 years for that shooting. But she has never deviated from her story. I'm not saying it's true. I'm just saying she has been steadfast in saying she saw who shot her and according to her, it was P. Diddy. Um, yeah, it's an incredible story and we're going to hear plenty more about it. Before you go, this is an unsavoury story if you ask me, but Miley Cyrus's family drama is being laid bare again by her mum, who has a habit of oversharing. Her name is Tish, and Tish, who was previously married to Miley's dad, country music star Billy Ray Cyrus, well, she's now talking about how her new marriage is perhaps in a little bit of trouble. She talked about this on her daughter Brandy's podcast, Sorry We're Stoned, to say that she's having some issues with her new husband, Aussie actor Dominic Purcell. Now, what's, what's particularly interesting here is that Dominic Purcell reportedly dated her youngest daughter, Noah, before he got together with the mother. I mean, is it ever okay? I can't believe I'm even asking this. Is it ever okay, Kinsey, to date your daughter's ex? Uh, I'd say no, but I think like one of the worst parts of this story is that the Sorry We're Stoned podcast is also also Tish's podcast. It's it's Tish's and Brandy's. So the Sorry We're Stoned, oh. I think it gives you just a, a you know, it gives you a better idea of who these people are. And I'm just gonna go ahead and say I blame Billy Ray Cyrus in the Disney Channel for all of this. Uh, because <laughs> it it's it's like classic dysfunction. I, I you know, I could never date somebody that my mother dated, but you know what? But Princess Diana dated her sister's ex-boyfriend and ended up marrying him. So, you know, it's not oh, completely. Okay. It's true. Yeah. Sister is a different thing. I mean, sisters, yeah. if, if it's your daughter, and the daughter yeah. is obviously not happy because uh, she refused to go along to this wedding. Uh, so she, she, she went, to, I think, to Walmart whilst her mum was getting married. So, yes, strange folks, celebrities, very strange indeed. Kinsey Schofield, thank you so much for your time tonight.